Good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to discuss about regenerative periodontology. Now, you all know that as a result of uh, periodontal disease, a lot of number of periodontal tissues are being destroyed. There is loss of gingiva, there is loss of periodontal ligament, there is loss of cementum, and there is loss of alveolar bone. Now, pedonal regeneration or pedonal healing is a complex procedure by which you try to regenerate all these four tissues back into their original form, function, and architecture. And this is what we are going to discuss about in this chapter known as regenerative pedonal surgery. Now, you have to understand certain terminologies like new attachment, reattachment, and all. Now, as a result of pedonal disease, you are the root is getting devoid of pedonal ligament. Now, when new pedonal ligament come and attach to a newly formed cementum on the root surface, that is it results in obliteration of pocket, and that is new attachment. And that is a result that we all want. Right. But as a result of pedonal surgery, you may not always get this complete regeneration of all the tissues. Now, sometimes we, it may be healing by means of long junction epithelium. When you do a routine flap surgery, this is, this is usually the outcome of long junction epithelium. We discuss about that. Then sometimes there may be ankylosis of the bone and tooth with some root resorption. Most of these pedonal surgery may result in recession. And over a period of time, sometimes you may find recurrence of these pockets and a combination of these results. So this is what you usually find after a pedonal surgery. Now you can look here. When you look here, you can see that you, are, you have a pocket here. Look, you have a deep pedonal pocket here. The bones that should have been here has gone down. Uh, Jive is almost at the level of the single number junction. Okay, you have a deep pocket. Now, what will you do in this case? In this case, what you do is you will open up that area when you're doing pedonal surgery. You are opening that area. You are debriding all these irritants that are present on the root surface, and then you are closing it, right? And this is any of your result. Now, if it is a new attachment of the dawn regeneration, this is what we actually need. Now, here what happens is this bone that is here is almost going to this level, you know, this bone back, right? And you have ligament as attachment between these root surface and this bone. That is what is what we knew. That, that is known as new attachment. That is known as regeneration. But what is a common thing that you often notice after flap surgery? After flap surgery, this is what you do. Now you heal. I mean, all the deposits are gone. But you know what happens is, you know, this tissue will come and attach here. The pocket won't be there. But this, the bone is at its original level. But I believe there is a soft tissue healing that is occurred over here. You can see that the, the epithelium, the junction epithelium is migrated all the way down here. And you have just a weak epithelial attachment. The problem with this is, you know, whenever there is a lot of mild inflammation here, this epithelial, you don't have a connective tissue attachment. You don't have a bone here. You don't have a ligament and bone in between. That attachment is really firm and it will prevent and give support at the same time. It will prevent future attachment loss. But here you have a long junction epithelium because the epithelium has got a high tendency from, for <coughs> what do you say, that high turnover rate so that it will tumble along the root surface and it will create long junction epithelium, but this is very weak. That is not what we want. We want this. Sometimes, you know, you have to show the bone and the tooth, which are as 
root resorption and colors is that was all known. Sometimes you may have the pockets may recur. Like, you know, over a period of time, sometimes even without deposits, it will come back at the original level. And along with that, you may find that the Java, which is present at this level of the signal, and I mentioned sometimes in most of the cases, would have this level to some of this level. So, this, this is the outcome of uh, normal uh, routine periodontal surgery that we do day to day. So I just explain uh, based on this diagram. Now this is a this is a section of a normal tooth. Let me find that uh, you have this uh, the, almost at the CEJ, you have the junction between attaching, you have the alveolar bone almost to this level, and plus that you have on the pedonal pigment fibers that you think the gingiva with no recession over here. Absolutely healthy gingiva. But when you look at the right side, when you compare with the left side, you can see that the bone from this level has gone down to this level, right? The gingiva has receded. There is loss of the pedonal ligament fibers also gone down. These are from the root surface, we have a lot of deposits. This is what happens in periodontal visits. Now, <clears throat> what you, when you do, uh, for this, what you do is usually to obliterate this pocket or treat the condition, you often do a procedure known as flap surgery. How do you do a flap surgery? Oh, you just you, you put incisions over here, which we have already discussed about uh, different types of incisions. Okay, you put incisions like this and you open up this area and remove all, all, this, all the accretions that are present on the root surface. It bright that area very well, irrigate that area, and you close the flap. Now when you close the flap, what happens? Okay, you have to close the flap, you have to dry the depth. Whatever I just told, everything has been done. Close the flap. And then you just close it like that. And it heals like this. And what is the problem here? The bone that is supposed to be at this level is at its original, I mean, at, it's at the disease level. And then you have there is no ligament as attachment between the bone and the tooth. This is all the remaining what was there during the disease person after disease or after treatment also. And you have this wrong epithelial attachment. But that is not what we want. So what we try to do is to bring back this aspect to this level. So that is what we are trying to do. So what can you do? You can add some biomaterials here, bone grafts, or to prevent this epithelium, this epithelium migration along the root surface, you place and use a substance called a barrier membrane, you place it so that this is in, it creates a space over here so that this bone cells can come in, go over here, this ligament can come and attach to it. So these procedures, extra procedures by which we try to regenerate or reconstruct periodontal tissues. These procedures are known as regenerative techniques. And this is basically what we are going to discuss in this, today's lecture. So we don't want a result like this. We want a result like this. Now this is an ultimate aim of periodontal therapy. But you know, you have a number of procedures, number of procedures that we do routinely, but no single or combination of procedures till now has been able to achieve complete pedonal regeneration in all the defects. Right. So when you look at reconstructive surgical techniques, what are the reconnect? You can you can classify that into two. One is whether you are using bone graft or you are not using bone graft. So the first part is non-bone graft associated new attachment techniques or non-bone graft associated reconstructive surgical techniques. It means that you are not associating, you are not attaching any bone graft to that. But you, apart from bone graft, you do other procedures that is known as bone graft associated new attachment. Now, when you add bone graft, for regeneration, it's called as bone graft associated. 
in this first part of the lecture what we are going to discuss is mainly about non bone graft associated new attachment now what is non bone graft associated procedure you, know, you have you can classify that into you are not doing any bone graft so what are the other techniques by which you want to break peritoneal regeneration one is the removing junctional and pocket epithelium now we know that you know when it is the epithelium that epithelium has got a higher turnover rate than the connective tissue cells so immediately after you replace a flap after peritoneal surgery now this epithelium will be attached will be present on the surface of the bone on the edges of the bone this epithelium will start migrating along the root surface so you try to as far as possible to remove this junctional and pocket epithelium that is your first concept second is you can prevent this migrating into the healing area what are the steps by which you can prevent this migrating into the healing area that is what we are going to discuss in this procedure so first we are going to discuss about uh, removal of junctional and pocket epithelium how to remove junctional and pocket epithelium so in this we have three techniques so what you do is you are removing just this epithelium what are the techniques by which you, you, uh, by which you can remove epithelium M mostly you do a simple method by which you remove pocket epithelium is to cure attach using your curettes or you have different types of this advanced cure attack techniques like inap inap is nothing but excision and new attachment techniques which we have discussed earlier then the undisplaced or a modified bitman flap where the inner lining of the epithelium or the complete pocket is being removed or sometimes you can use chemicals you apply chemicals so that this chemicals will destroy or they, <coughs> they will lyse the inner lining of the bone but you know that that is not being done nowadays i mean discuss about cure attach and all or injure community discuss about chemicals and we told that i mean we discuss that these <coughs> chemicals you know you can't control the depth of penetration of these chemicals and hence it is only of historical interest now what are the methods by which you can prevent the epithelial migration now when you close the flap you have the epithelium immediately adjacent to the root so this will start migrating along the root surface that is one thing so so what are the different techniques by which you want to prevent this epithelium migration one thing is you know edges of the bone in the flap area itself you try to remove maximum epithelium and then what you can do is you know this epithelium this area where you have denuded the root surface i mean the the, the flap of epithelium that can be covered by means of the tissue that you take from the palate that is a freezing gel graft so what happens is you know you are delaying the formation of epithelium in that own site that is one thing second thing is you know <clears throat> when you do a coronally advanced flap coronally means from the bone margin of the healing area you are moving the flap more coronally coronally towards the crown of the tooth so the epithelium has to travel more distance to reach the healing site so you increase the the area the distance that the epithelium has to heal and come and interfere with the healing site so that is a second technique that is you are placing a coronally advancement and the third and the most important and the commonly employed technique is the guided tissue regeneration or which is known as gtr <clears throat> now this is a technique you know the, this is a simple technique but you know this is a technique this is a topic that is very important that is commonly asked it can be asked as a short note for you or it can be asked as a as a question now what is gtr gtr is you are preventing the epithelium from migrating along the root surface and you are creating a space there for the connective tissue cells from the periodontal ligament to come and occupy the space and form different cells that are needed for periodontal tissue regeneration 
Now these were, you know, these are based on uh, studies by some pioneering individuals, pioneering researchers, Nyman, Linde, Gottlob, and Carrick. These are the four investigators. You have to buy out the name. You probably like to write this in your write this and a question is being asked. Now, this whole concept is based on one thing. It means that only the pedonal ligament cells have got the capacity to regenerate all the tissues of the pedonal ship. Now, why only pedonal, pedonal ligament have, has got neural crest cells? And these neural crest cells will come into the healing site and they will differentiate into different cells and form the non tissues there. I'll explain. So B GTR means you just place, consist of placing barriers of different types to cover the bone and the pedon ligament and thus it temporarily separate from the gingival epithelium and it prevents epithelial migration. How does it do so? Now suppose this is a wound, you just consider this as a wound again. Now this is the, this is the gingiva here. So you have reflected when you are doing a pedon map surgery, what you are doing, you are reflecting till this, this is a bone, this, you just forget about this now, this, this thing over here now. So what you have reflected, this flap, you have reflected the gingiva totally here, okay? And you have a small bony defect like this. Now this is the area where you have a lot of granulation tissue will be present you know, on the root surface, a lot of calculus and other deposits will be there. So after you have reflected the flap, now this area, this area, you will thoroughly clean this area and you will remove all the deposits that are present on the root surface. And in a normal case, what you do is you will cover this flap. You'll just put this flap and switch it over here. And what will happen from the edges of this, this, this flap, you have the epithelium. The epithelium has got a high turnover rate than these connective tissue cells. So these epithelial cells will migrate fast along the root surface and this will form a long junctional epithelium cell there. And once an epithelium is formed over here, now the connective tissue cells can't come and attach to it. So to, to prevent that, to prevent this, what we do is you, process, you place something called as a barrier membrane here. This is your barrier membrane. This is GTR. This is what we GTR. So what does it do? It prevents this epithelium from migrating along the root surface. It creates a space over here. It, space maintenance is one function. So here you have this, the, the, the penonal ligament has got stem cells. These stem cells will migrate into this area. They will differentiate the fibroblasts to form collagen fibers. They will differentiate into cementoblasts to form cementum. They can differentiate into osteoblasts to form bone here. And you have also osteoblasts in the surrounding bone. So that will also differentiate in new osteoblasts. So you have new bone that is formed like this over here till here. And then after that, you will have different types of collagen fibers that is attaching between the bone and the tooth, between the bone and the tooth. So that is the aim of GTR or guided tissue regeneration, right? Now you have different membranes, uh, different shaped membranes that are available depending upon uh, different situations where we use this. So this is, this is just a diagrammatic explanation of what we do in GTR. Now I said when you do a, what you do is uh, if you have a pocket like this, you open up this flap and then you close it. When you close it, what happens? Normal healing, you just close the gingiva here. This epithelium will migrate along the root surface. Now you can see that the bone level and the, the fiber level will be at the exactly original position where it was seen before the <coughs> before we treated it. Now in GTR, what happens is you know you are placing a barrier membrane like this. So this prevents the epithelium from migrating along the root surface. That is the best thing. And this, you can see that the bone is being formed and you have a ligament that's in between these two. Wonderful. So that is the basic idea of GTR. So it prevents the epithelium to migrate. It prevents, it 
provides a space for healing. These are the two objectives of GTR. Now, <clears throat> you have different types of membranes that are available, GTR, guided tissue regeneration membranes. And you can classify these membranes as resorbable and non-resorbable membrane. The earlier used membranes were, uh, the first used membrane was called as a mini pore filter, the Teflons were used. And uh, previously we always used uh, non-resorbable type of membranes. The problem is, for non-resorbable type of membrane, probably after about three to four weeks, we have to again uh, give local anesthesia and to remove that membrane. So that was most tedious. So now we started using different types of resorbable membranes, mostly collagen type of membranes. You know, there are a key number of membranes that are available now that you just have to understand the, <coughs> the, uh, the concept of this, the names of this. But basically what all these membranes does is the same. It prevents the epithelium from migrating into that wound area. It helps in the regeneration, creates a space for the pedonal tissues to regenerate. Now, what are the steps in your area? <coughs> now, the steps are almost similar to that of your uh, routine flap surgery. And sometimes if you're doing a localized flap surgery, what you can do is, you know, you put vertical positions, sometimes uh, probably one or two teeth anteriorly and about one teeth distally and we bright that area. So basically, everything that you do in flap surgery, you do. And just before closing the flap, probably you will have to adapt, cut to the membrane, adapt the membrane, probably suture that membrane, stabilize the membrane, and then close it. Now, where does the membrane? The membrane should extend three to four mm laterally. You know, if you have a defect, it should extend three, three to four mm laterally to the defect about <coughs> two to three mm, um, three to four mm, a pickle to the defect, two to three mm lateral to the defect. And it's about, from the CEJ, about two mm, a pickle is being placed. So that is how you place that membrane. And then, uh, as I told you before, you can stabilize the membrane and then you can switch it, okay? And place a pack, which is quite optional. Now suppose if you have a, this, 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 you can see a furcation defect over here. Now when you have defects like that, you know, here what happens is in the flap is being only an anterior vertical position is being one. So pretty much, you can see that this much area of reflection is taking place. You can see the defect over here. So you place a membrane like that. You place about three to four mm. If you have that defect through here, about three to four millimeter. If I go to that, you place it about one to two millimeter lateral to the defective places and for most of the CE, you just believe it's easier you place the membrane. This membrane has to be stabilized by means of the sling suture and then you just close it. After you close it, just close it. Now this is a resorbable type of a non-resorbable type of membrane that if I shown that you know a second stage surgery was done and several so this membrane was taken out. And nowadays we don't do it. <coughs> now if you can see this is, this is one, you can see a huge vertical defect as well as you know, you can see a provocation defect over here. So this is this is seen in this is from Caranzo. Now you can see that this is being filled with bone graft. So this is, this is where we use multiple techniques. And then you place a membrane like this. This is a membrane. What does this place when you close the flap over here? This membrane will prevent the migration of this epithelium. Along the ropes, so that the base can You can see that after the entry, this is with the concern of the patient, they have done this re entry after what we did, and then they found that. Now, look at the defect here when you compare the problems. Complete regeneration is occurred at all. So, you can see that reasonably good amount of this. This is not close. It's four to one. Another case in which you can see a defect that the person is being closed. So that is uh, about uh, GTR membrane. So basically, we were discussing about different techniques by which we want to prevent the migration of epithelium along the road surface. But again, we have other different techniques by which you can get some amount of regeneration. What are the other techniques without using bone graft? Second technique is the biomodification of root surface. It is known as root conditioning. Now, you know, <clears throat> as a result of periodontal pocket, you may find that a lot of 
microorganisms, lost calculus, plant get embedded on the root surface. And plant calculus, everything primarily consists of microorganisms. And what is it? What will the microorganism do? The microorganism will produce a lot of factors which get absorbed onto the cementum. The problem in cementum is got no cementum is something like it's permeable. So the cementum absorbs these microbial factors. So while doing scaling, what you do, you remove all the calculus. But the outermost layer of cementum is really altered as a result of these microbial deposits. So this will act up, this will be a hindrance for new, new attachment to take place. You got the point here? So basically what we can do is we can do a root planing by which we can again remove most of the cementum. But after that, you know, there will be a smear layer that is made. So what you do is after scaling and root planing, you can apply certain chemicals to modify the root surface so that there is new attachment. So it favors regeneration. So that procedure is known as biomodification of root surface. Now, what will, when you apply a chemical onto the root surface after scaling and root planing, what are the results that we achieve? We achieve a four millimeter deep demineralized zone with exposure of collagen fibers. Good. As a result of instrumentation, smear layer is formed on the root surface. That smear layer is the one and the dead to do the exposed. Good. There are a lot of endotoxins, I told you before, sometimes they may be present, absorbed onto the cement that is being utilized, and the toxins and bacteria may be destroyed. And because the early, these collagen fibers are exposed, there is early fibrin linkage. And this early fibrin linkage can actually prevent some, to an extent, the migration of uh, epithelium along the root surface. So that is the basic idea of doing fire modification. So it removes a smear layer, it exposes the dendrinal tubules, the collagen fibers are exposed, the bacteria and the bacterial deposits are being removed, and there is early fibril linkage between the collagen fibers. So this help definitely promote regeneration. So that is the reason why we do biomodification. <coughs> now, what are the materials that we use? You know, commonly we use four materials. The first material that was tried was citric acid at the pH of one. And the person who has done this lot of study on this is Urist. U R I S T. Urist is the investigator who has done a lot of studies on this. The second is fibronectin. It is a glycoprotein that is needed for fibroblasts to attach to a tooth. Tetracycline. Now you can take a capsule of tetracycline and you can just uh, what you can just wet it and use that using cotton budgets and you can use it as a food conditioning agent and EDT at a percentage of 24 percent. So these are the different materials that we use. The steps are same. The steps are same for all the plant surgery. Okay, incision, debridement, and before suturing, what you do is after root cleaning. You know that the root is clean, the fragment, everything is over. After that, you, 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 you take whatever material is there on a cotton bludget, just burnish it well for about two to five minutes, leave it there for another two to three minutes, and then what you can do is irrigate the area. And after before replacing, after root conditioning, you can place this ETM membranes. And sometimes we are going to discuss about bone graft if you need. You can do root conditioning. After that, you can do bone graft. After that, you can do gallic tissue membrane. Then you can close it. You can combine all these techniques. But this is one procedure. Probably they will ask you a short two. <clears throat> so we discussed about ways by which we can prevent epithelium to migrate in the root surface. Second method we discussed is <coughs> root biomodification. And the third is biologic mediators. Now, what do you understand by biologic mediators? It's always known as growth factors. Now, growth factors are factors which are produced in the local environment during wound healing. And these factors may regulate almost all the events of wound healing. Okay. 
They aid in the connective tissue migration, differentiation, proliferation, and synthesis of extracellular matrix. Now, when you look at peritoneal regeneration, you this or bone healing, all these steps are there. So these are factors which help in all these. I'll discuss it, I'll let you know. Now, these are the names of the various growth factors which have a potential effect on the non-regeneration. Platelet derived growth factor, transforming growth factor, insulin-like growth factor, bone morphogenic factors, until number of other factors also. And where do you find all these factors? There are these produced ones. Produce residently in our body, in the area where tissues are being healed or in the wound healing site by means of macrophages, endothelial cells, fibroblasts, and platelets. So these are the cells that commonly produce these factors. And these factors help in the aid in the non-regeneration. So that is a basic idea. Now suppose, you know, here, what happens you know, if you have a defect like this? You, this area will blood clot will be there. What you need, what you need over here is you need uh, the bone, the cells, the, the non ligament cells from the remaining the non ligament cells that area to come and migrate to that area. The osteoblast to migrate into the blood clot and form bone here and the the segmentoblast to form differentiate and form segmentum here and the fibroblast to lay down collagen fiber so that the fibrous union between this root surface and the bone. That is the ultimate aim. So to aid that, you first have the cells from here to come to this area. Okay. So you have to attract the cells from the cells. So when you look here, you know, migration, you can see. So in migration, the cells from here has to migrate from there to this one area. So if you add growth factors here, this will aid in the migration of these stem cells to this area. Once you this reach this area, what is the next step? Next step is they should differentiate. Okay. Now once these stem cells come here, they have to differentiate. They have to differentiate in what type of cell? They have to differentiate into fibroblasts to lay down collagen to cementoblast to form a cellular cementum, to <coughs> osteoblast to form bone. So that migration is being helped by growth factors. Differentiation is going <coughs> to be helped by growth factors. And once these cells are differentiated, one cell can't produce all these tissues. These cells has to divide multiply. So they have to proliferate. So for proliferation, again, these growth factors play and once they proliferate, they will start laying down the extracellular matrix. That is, they will, the tissue is being laid down, bone is being laid down, collagen fiber is being laid down, cementum is being laid down. So all these different steps, migration, differentiation, proliferation, laying down extracellular, all these factors are created by growth factors. So suppose in this, to this bone to the area, you infuse a lot of growth factors. This will accelerate the healing process and it will try to regenerate the down tissues. So that is the basic idea. And this is what we done. Now, one common uh, economically available mode of growth factor delivery is called as PRF. It's there in our department. Nothing but take the patient's own blood, you centrifuge it. You cent when you centrifuge it, it will go into different layers, <coughs> layer of RBC will be seen below. Then you have a platelet rich zone. It's not as a PRP or a PRF. And you have a platelet poor plasma drop. So this center part that the PRF drop, that plate rich fibrin, take and place it there. Or you can mix it with bone graft there. And this will aid in faster regeneration. And this is the re entry with the, uh, this, uh, with the uh, concern of the patient. You can see that. A lot of regeneration is of, but we don't know what exactly tissue is formed. Because if you want to know what tissue is really formed there, then I'll be left to do extra studies. They were acceptable, they will not they will be acceptable <coughs> before and after. 
and a type of growth factor. So we discussed different types of growth factors, insulin derived growth factor, platelet derived growth factor, transforming growth factor, and bone marrow. There is another type of growth factor which really helps in the formation of acellular cementum during tooth formation. And this is, we found that a protein called as amylogenin, which is secreted by the herpes herpix epithelial group two during tooth development helps in the formation of acellular cementum. So a similar enamel matrix protein was obtained of porcine origin and it is market in the US, which is known as endogain. So this basically helps in this promote, this protein will promote when you apply on the root surface after the applied surgery to promote, it will promote or it will aid in the formation of acidular cellular. So if you know the name, enamel matrix protein, marketed in the name of endogain in the US. Now this is a photograph that we have taken from the textbook. You can see a defect. We have endogen has increased completely, and then switch it. So that is the end of uh, the part one of regenerative abdominal surgery. So we have mainly discussed about ways to prevent epithelial migration, a root biomodification, and biological modifiers. Thank you.